welcome to Season 3 of Histo Help, a podcast series with tips, tricks, and solutions to the common and not-so-common problems in the lab. In this season, we're going to expand on your tech knowledge, talk about a polar bear, and figure out some interesting training ideas for heart tissue. Thanks for listening, and enjoy! And welcome to this episode of Histo Help. I'm with Eric Peterson, who is the Animal Histology Services Lab Manager at the Stanford School of Medicine in Stanford, California. In December of 2020, Eric posted a really interesting problem he was having with the Bolshowski stain um, and some old tissue that he came across. So we're sitting down with him to talk a little bit about what that problem was and how he solved it. So first, Obviously, welcome, Eric, and thanks for being with us. And if you could share a little bit about the background on the problem you were having. Well, sure. We were, um, there was a uh, researcher here at Stanford, Dr. Catherine Lucot, and she was working with our department chair, Dr. Cheryl Green, on uh, some old tissue from, let me read the details here, a 28-year-old male who was euthanized in October 5th, 1984, male polar bear. Yes. And this polar bear had presented with weight loss, somnolence, and uh, suspected pulmonary edema. Uh, so after it was euthanized, its uh, brain was resected. And uh, in, into many cases, in fact, there were, we had access to over 35 blocks. And they were put into formalin, and they stayed there for that, the intervening time. So something like 35 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, then this researcher, Dr. Lecoe, came upon them and wanted to do something with them. So uh, we processed them and we cut them into for H&E slides and they stained perfectly that way. Um, but so the typical stain to use to diagnose Alzheimer's disease would be a Bielshowski stain, which is a silver, silver stain. Mm. And uh, so that's what we did. We ran Bielshowski stains on all of these polar bear slides. And they were all extremely dark, much, much darker than uh, what we use for our controls, which is uh, mouse brain sections. And uh, so we, there were a number of things that we could have tried with that. So uh, the way we, we got a little better fidelity is just by reducing the amount of time that was in the silver solution. So it, it appeared to be something about, that was regarding the tissue itself that uh, made it so dark because our control tissue, when we lessened the time that it was in, it, it was much lighter, you know, much lighter than normal. And uh, so, you know, not a great control under the circumstances. Sure. Um, sometime later, uh, you know, after we had finished this and after we had provided the slides for Dr. Lico, we, it, the idea came to me that we could perhaps, you know, if you use, uh, many of us use citric acid in heat to unmask antigens to, to kind of reverse the, um, the cross-linking that formalin has done. So uh, I decided to try that on some of these slides. So I did uh, 20 minutes in pH 6 citric acid, which is kind of normal, and then at 100 degrees centigrade. And then uh, after I did that, the... Uh, both the polar bear slides and the mouse slides, they took up the staining much, much more slowly. So I don't, um, I'm not an organic chemist, so I'm not clear uh, exactly what went on. And this was true, in fact, also with uh, the other conventional modality for heat-induced epitope retrieval, which is pH 9 uh, tris EDTA buffer. So they both, uh, they both reduced the, the stain uptake quite a bit. And I, I think I posted a picture to that effect on the awesome. blog site. So silver stains, um, it's interesting. We did a, a webinar on silver stains last year um, and talking about some of the challenges with them. Um, would there be a different, and this is just might be my lack of knowledge. So um, is, would there be a different type of silver stain that you could have used beside that you feel like you would have gotten a different result? Or do you think that, um, or is that, is the Bilshowski just is sort of the, I don't want to say gold standard, the silver standard maybe to be it's, using it's for that particular. Yeah, okay. Bilshowski is the avenue to take if you're investigating Alzheimer's. Okay. Um, we could have done, you know, they could have done IHC for the particular proteins of interest like tau and beta amyloid. Um, but 
that's more expensive, more time consuming. Uh, so Bill Showski is the way to go. Do you think that you'll be able to use this strategy? Um, I mean, do you think you'd be able to, would this be applied to anything else that you could think of? <laughs> that's hard to say. Uh, <laughs> we don't book, come across think, polar bear brain that often, but you know, just on the off chance somebody is. Right. Uh, you know, if it ever happens again, I'll be ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you satisfied with the way that it worked out? Uh, yes. Uh, the paper has been submitted and, awesome. uh, Dr. Lico will hear about it soon, I think. Awesome. Well, we're really excited for you guys to have came across that shirt with us and, of course, have the success that you had with the strategy. Um, and that's that's all my questions. So thank you so much for being with us. Right. Thank you very much. All right. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you have a tip, trick, or piece of knowledge you'd like to share, let us know. We would love to feature you on a future episode of Histo Help. Have a great day.